With an area of some 18,000 square kilometres, it's the second largest of the Hebridean islands and separated from the mainland by the one kilometre wide Kyle of Lochalsh. The dramatic landscape with moors and mountains combine to give Sky a special character, which make it a favourite destination for tourists, walkers and climbers. Sky has a particular place in Scottish history. During the 17th and 18th century, the island was much affected by the Stuarts' attempts to regain the throne, culminating in the 1745 rebellion led by Bonnie Prince Charlie, who fled to the island after his defeat at Culloden. Against this background of history, legend and landscape, the linking of Skye to the mainland is a challenge with many facets. The island is currently served by a ferry, which, despite recent upgrading of the vessels, can't cope with summer peaks and is subject to interruption due to bad weather in winter. This service will be replaced by the Skye crossing. 2.4 kilometres long, the link skips over two small islands with the 200 metre long Carrick viaduct, and the 400 meter wide shipping channel with the 570 meter long main sky bridge which may come to be known as Drochetnan Aelin in Gaelic. The construction contract for the sky crossing was awarded to Miller Civil Engineering and Dividag of Germany in joint venture. The carry fire duct was constructed using the incremental launching method. The piers and their footings were built on dry land as large precast elements and positioned on prepared foundations with a floating crane. The piers have a circular section, widening to an ellipse at the top. The elegant piers and the shallow deck both contribute to the overall elegant appearance. The joint venture and other bidders examined a range of very different designs in both steel and concrete. In the final round of the design competition, a cable stayed bridge with a 390 meter main span, also proposed by the joint venture, was under serious consideration. However, in the event the cable stayed design was abandoned in favor of the arch, which was considered to be more appropriate in this environment and was also more cost-effective. The 400 meter navigation channel is spanned by a symmetrical frame with a main span of 250 meters. A major feature of the design concept was the use of the free cantilever construction method. Construction of the foundations in an exceptionally difficult environment was achieved by the use of prefabricated caissons, which were built in a dry dock some 30 kilometers away. The caissons were maneuvered into position and lowered onto the prepared foundation pads using the falling tide. The pier tables for the free cantilevering operation are eccentric and are stabilised by a temporary pier on the land side of each main pier. 
The height of the superstructure at the pier of 12.5 metres and the complicated geometry of the section placed extreme demands on the contractor. Innovative and unusual elements for the usual treatment of the main bridge. The bottom corners of the box section are chamfered at 45 degrees, reducing the visual height of the deck. The lower parts of the web are sloped outwards at 7 degrees. This flare further reduces the apparent depth of section. The outer surface of the web above the flare is heavily profiled with ribs and a rough board finish. The partially completed structure shows that these features are effective. The creation of strongly differing surfaces and textures produces a surprising play of light and shade and thus a constantly changing image of the bridge. From the pier table, the cantilevers can be constructed to a length of 111 metres, at which point a second temporary support is required. Following completion of the closing segment, the precast fascia panels are installed and the finished works progressed. With redistribution of moments within the structure, the superstructure is lowered onto the bearings at each abutment and the temporary piers removed. Skybridge sets new limits for free cantilever construction, not only because of the complicated section geometry, but also the extreme slenderness of the superstructure. The contractor Miller Dividag Joint Venture was also tested to the limit and has succeeded in constructing a truly remarkable structure, a further milestone in free cantilever construction. The sky crossing will be open to traffic in the autumn and will play an important role in the future development of the Western Isles.